Yo, what's good, my beautiful people? This your girl, Hustle Queen Lee, and welcome to another episode of Sisters Review along with House of Pain. Now, before I get into this review, I do want to give a disclaimer because Sisters is dealing with a very hot issue, a very triggering issue, and that is domestic violence. And so I just want everyone to please remember that this is a review. I would never make light or just for entertainment to, you know, to make fun or to harp on someone who has been abused or is currently being abused. It's it's a review. And I also, you know, just want to extend a resource. If you happen to be listening and you are in a volatile situation, a volatile relationship, and you are seeking help, the National Domestic Violence Hotline number is 1-800-799. 7233 again that is the national domestic violence hotline number 1-800-799-7233 it is completely confidential it is 24 hours a day 365 days a week if you need help and you are seeking help and you're in that situation please reach out your life could really depend on it all right so now that I've done that Let's get into this review. So for those who are here to specifically listen to House of Pain, make sure you click the description box so you can find out exactly where that review begins. I'm not feeling 100%, but I'm still going to bring it, still going to give y'all these reviews like I'm known to give. All right. Thank you guys for viewing, commenting, sharing, messaging me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I greatly appreciate you. It means so much. I read everything. I do try my best to respond so I got that syndrome where you think you respond to people and you really didn't respond. So don't judge my heart. It's my mind. I just forgot. So don't take offense to it. Love y'all. Okay. <laughs> so we about to get into this sister's review. So this is um, season two, episode 11, entitled The Hot Stove. So this episode opens up with Gary and Andy arguing back and forth in her apartment. Now, this scene was challenging to watch not because it was bad it just really made me you know really take an internal look to say hey because I I have had friends and people close to me who have been in domestic violence situations and with the character of Andy you know it's so interesting because she's such this on the outside this strong you know focused woman when on the inside Andy is really a shattered and battered woman who I believe have has very, very low self-esteem and very, very low self-worth about herself to even entertain a man like Gary at this moment in their situationship because this man broke into your house and you actually have the audacity to go back and forth with him and she's trying to have a rational conversation with someone who is irrational I believe that scene, that was a long scene. That scene was probably like four minutes, including the fight. And the fact that she actually had the temperament to listen, to go back and forth to Gary, I don't like this. Gary, why are you? And I'm looking at her like, what the hell? Andy, what is really, he broke into your house. You need to be calling the police. And so that's how I really felt like watching this scene. It was so triggering for me. I've never been in that situation. But it was just like, how are you even able to, have such composure dealing with this this person who is definitely displaying psychotic behavior. In that one scene alone, Gary went from one emotional extreme to another. So not only is he physically abusive, he's emotionally unstable in all his ways, in all his ways. When she, as they were talking, and she remembered that she took her key, she was like, wait, I took my key from you. When homeboy said, I have several, (laughs) time out. Andy, you in danger, girl. That means, number one, don't pass go. Do not collect the $200. You need to get the the hell out of Dodge, and 911 needs to be on the line. As many times as she threatened to call the police, as many times as I thought the helper really was calling the police, we find out Andy never called the darn police on Gary. And I'm just like, wow, this is, um... This is really, this is, so, this is so interesting. And even when Gary stated, you know, our, our relationship can't end this way. And she said, I'm not, I'm not ending it. 
I'm not saying I'm ending it. I'm like, well, baby, baby girl, what you mean? I was getting so mad. I think I called Andy every name in the book when she said that. The things I said about Andy was so disrespectful. I'm glad it's not recorded and no one has footage of me because it was really that bad because I'm looking at her and I'm like, you have advice for every friend. You was just trying to, you know, give advice or, or tell Sabrina what she should do in the situation with her and Calvin yet. This is the situation that you're in. And I think Andy, she definitely masked herself very well to appear to be this certain woman to her friends when in actuality, they already know who the hell she is and they know she's not that chick. Like, Andy, you're not that woman. You were probably the weakest link out of all of us, to be perfectly honest. You just have a profession that affords you money, that affords you a certain lifestyle. But other than that, I really do believe that Andy is the weakest and that says a lot because Sabrina, Jesus. But anyway, that says a lot for me to say that I do believe that Andy is the weakest of the bunch. And so Paris comes over, okay? She tells Gary that he needs to leave. Paris ends up getting into a fight with Gary. This is another uh, pivotal moment because we have to be careful because when we don't end things or we don't properly handle, excuse me, handle our shit properly, we put other people in harm's way when we don't effectively deal with what we got going on in our own lives. He's an innocent bystander. He's just coming over because you told him you wanted to see him. He's here, and he's in the midst of your toxic situation. Thankfully, Paris can, you know, throw some little hands. He, the homeboy can squabble a little bit. But it's like, you know, that that was a perfect example of what happens when we don't take care of the things that we need to take care of. And so as they're fighting... This is another thing that made me mad. As they're fighting, Andy, stop, stop. I said, girl, if you don't pick up one of them lamps and knock the hell out of Gary, what are you doing? I'm just like, oh, my God. I was so over that scene. I think I was I was hot. I was 38 hot watching that scene. Andy made me so mad. It, she just, oh, God, she made me so mad because I'm like, you're just standing there. Hit him. Kick him. Do something. Make yourself of some use. You didn't even call the police. You didn't even call the police. And then when Gary finally was getting ready to leave, he like, it's over. It's over. We're, we're, we're done. It's over. I'm like, bruh, 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 bruh. It's been over. Y'all not together. I don't know why Tyler write these, these lines for these men. He did the same thing with Zach. When Zach... Broke into the hotel room. He was like, we ain't going to never be together, ever. I'm like, you doing her a favor, bro. You promise? <laughs> Get the hell out. Like, I don't know why he, I don't know why Tyler writes like that, but it confuses the hell out of me because I'm like, y'all not together. So I don't, I don't even understand that. So I got I to gotta leave them alone for a minute. I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back to Andy. So let's transition into Fatima and Zach. Now, is it just me or was Fatima a little thirsty-ish on this episode. Because I was like, Fatima, the thirsty look don't look good on you, boo, because I already know what you're doing. So Fatima calls Zach. And basically she tells Zach, I've been thinking about you. I want you to come over. I was like, "Mm mm-hmm. You just want some. So why don't you call one of those other two or three men that you're dating for them to come scratch that itch that you got? Because at the end of the day, at this moment in time, it seems that Fati- I think Fatima really, really likes Zach, but she won't allow herself to go there. So the other best thing is to just use him for sex while you can. Because I'm like, why are you so into your feelings? Why are you upset? Why are you acting like Zach not hurt your feelings because he told you he's not coming over? Now, with Zach, I would have liked to see him. Be honest. Because I'm thinking you're repeating the same things you did in your previous relationship. I don't care how bad it is, how ugly it may be, how detrimental you think it may be to y'all situation. Tell the truth. I was honestly shocked that Hayden got to Zach like that. I really, really was. I understand, like, you know, Hayden is a lawyer and he has certain information on Zach. But I I was very surprised that he allowed that what Hayden said to bother him or or to get to him like that. And I do understand that Zach is, he wants to do better. You know, he was like, nothing in my life has worked and this thing has to work because he understands the value in what he's doing and also what he will be receiving 
if he helps complete this house, like the money that he's going to receive from this. So I, I understood his perspective at the same time. If Hayden does something, no one is aware except Zach. So it's not like Fatima could help him. It's not even like Chris can help him. Chris, you know, Karen's mom, boyfriend, which I'm trying to figure out where he is because we haven't seen him, I believe, since episode three, I think. Yeah. So I'm like, where, where, where is Chris? So I understand, like I said, I understand where Zach is coming from. I just feel like it, it was a wasted opportunity to be completely honest with Fatima, even though they may just be, you know, F buddies right now, still, I know it's something there. I just would have appreciated, like, just be honest with the girl because she, she can help you if Hayden do something jacked up, but he didn't go that route, so, you know, whatever. So Fatima obviously was not happy with Zach's response about staying over at the house because she took her hot in the ass ass <laughs> and drove to the construction site. But we're going to get to that scene a little later now. My favorite scene of the episode, my favorite people on the show, Ebony and Kevin, also known to us as Karen and Aaron. <laughs> Let me tell y'all, that scene, I don't, you know, you know what I'm saying? Look, okay, it's hard for me to understand why people don't like them. I don't understand it. I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. Watching Aaron and Karen is so beautiful and it's so motivating for people who I believe who are in that age range who feels like, you know what, I might as well deal with this no good, whatever, because ain't nothing better out there. There's nothing better out there for me. And I think that for Karen, because we know more about her than we do Aaron, in one of the episodes, it was like in the, it was maybe like episode 18 or 19, I can't vividly remember, when she was telling Zach, like, I have been so afraid to let you go because I don't know what's out there, too afraid to find something new. And I think once Karen began to let her guard down with Aaron, I mean, her bloom, her glow has just been so infectious. It's just so, like, it's so amazing to watch. And so Karen comes in after her night out with the girls, and she finds Aaron asleep on the couch. And so she's kind of tiptoeing because she doesn't want to wake him up. Well, he wakes up, and um, she was like, you know, I didn't mean to wake you. And he he said that he would have been upset if she didn't. And so she was like, why? And uh, he was like, because I missed you. And so she sat down next to him, and she was like, you know, that was corny. And so he, uh, so he, they shared like a little laugh or whatever, and he, um, he pulls her into him as they lay on the couch. The things that they talked about I thought was so pivotal as it as it pertains to their relationship and the progression of their relationship. Because to me, Aaron basically told her he loves her without telling her those three words. And so he can, he used it as like a euphemism, S-A-T. I ain't used that word in forever. <laughs> I don't know where that word just came out. <laughs> but he used it as a euphemism, um, comparing it to um, a train. You know, he felt like, you know, Love is in the air, and he believes that their love train is already in the station. I said, baby, you better talk that. Talk, Aaron, you feel me? I like that. And so he was like, I'm just curious how, you know, you feel about it. And she said it. She said similar. Um, and they talked about they, they relived their moment when they first met each other at the at the um, the um grocery store. And she did. Aaron, Aaron, Karen cussed Aaron the hell out. Um, I think he deserved it. I didn't know she was going to go that, that deep with it, but hey, hey, hey. But um, I looking at them when they first met, they first met episode four of season one, and looking at where they are now, I would have never imagined that we would be watching this happen before our eyes and just how fluid they are with each, with each other, how comfortable she has become with him. Because for, And I always said I thought that Karen had deeper feelings for Aaron that she was willing to you know, um, express or show. And to me, this episode, I believe, is a pivotal moment for what we're going to see in the second half of the season with them. And um, it was just it was just beautiful. It was just beautiful. And to actually see a couple who are becoming closer, becoming stronger, becoming tighter without sex being incorporated into that relationship. So for me, that's beautiful, too, because everybody ain't out here boning. You know, everybody ain't out here with their legs spread. 
and sliding in something. Some people actually take it slow and really fall in love with that person. So if something was to happen, you know, it, I believe that that the the union or the bond is stronger because sex has nothing to do with us being together. Sex has nothing to do with us maintaining a friendship or a healthy relationship, and that's not something I can say for the uh, for any other couple on the show because everybody else is having sex. Everybody else is getting it all the way in besides Aaron and Karen. So I really enjoyed their back and forth. Um, <laughs> and then when she was like, let's go to bed, and he was like, you think I could do that? Because uh, brother, brother Aaron was on hard, and it's like, we got to, you want me to go lay with you? And she was basically saying, like, you know, I'm going to help you not do nothing. And so I just thought their their scene was beautifully written. Time frame was good. I enjoyed every moment of that conversation that they had. It was just beautiful. It was just it was just perfect. Yeah, yeah. And, and women. I know there's some women out there who can't stand Aaron. And for what reason, I don't know why. I just really, really want you to know. There are so many good men out there. They exist, women. I'm telling you, personally, they exist, sis, who will love you, who will cherish you, who will make you feel like I must be in the midst of a dream because there is no way that this man is loving me like this, treating me like this, acknowledging me like this. They, they're out there. The same problem that a lot of women feel like there's no good men out there. Men feel the same way. Ain't no good woman out there. I can't find. I have male friends talk to them all the time. There, there are amazing women out there who exist who are single. There are great men out there who exist and they are single. Don't ever give up your hope to love. To find love is out there. I just had to. I just had to plug that because I just feel like sometimes, you know, we feel that way, and. To just never lose hope and, and just continue to believe that what you want, you will find it or and it will find you. So I just had to throw that in there. So I'm going to come back to Aaron and Karen a little later. So let's go to back to Andy and Paris. So after Gary leaves and, and, and Andy is icing Paris's hand, he got his knuckles all jacked up. Um, He asked her to sit down because he really wants to know how base how are you with this person like how how is this the man that you're you're with and he didn't understand it and so Andy stated that Gary showed a side of himself that he that she had never seen before and I'm like Andy how did you let that lie slide out your mouth like that like it was nothing because we all know this isn't the first time that Gary has done anything like this. Now, to this extreme, yes. But he has all he has displayed the fact that he has these traits and these attributes of putting his hands on a woman, making a woman feel small. He's already did that to Andy. I don't know what more you want, sis, but to tell Paris you didn't you've never seen this side to Gary, BS. That was straight BS. So she ended up asking Harris to leave, which floored me. Because I'm going to tell you straight up, number one, I'm not just taking the key from my man. I'm going to take your key, and I'm going to change my locks, period. That's on the first day. So for her and Gary to have been going through what they've been going through all this time and to know you've never changed the locks, is that, that was a problem. Asking Paris to leave why you know you got this psychotic man out here who is liable to do anything to you, you have no protection. You have n nothing. You didn't ask none of your sisters to come over there. You Nothing. And I'm like, that was really dumb. And so, you know, Paris was like, this is jacked up. And then she made a statement like, yeah, you know, basically she made him feel like I called you because I was drunk. And I'm thinking, Andy, to make anyone feel I am only right for you when you are intoxicated says a lot. I don't know how much. Paris would be willing to deal with because if I'm if I was dealing with a dude and you only call me when you're drunk, that's a problem. Especially knowing I may want more from you than just sex, and that's the only time you reach out to me. Lose my number. Just lose my number. So I I really I felt bad for Paris because because he got into a fight over Andy BS. Then you ask him to leave after having him drive from wherever he lives to your house. 
and to know that you're that you're vulnerable and you have no protection. So and you know, I'm like, it's it's just because this woman is so smart intellectually and just have no common sense. Andy has no common sense. KJ, I love you. If you listen to this, you you know what I'm talking about. You already know. But anyway, <laughs> I'm just saying, it, it's so um, it's disheartening watching her character. So I really hope and pray that the second season of Sisters, we are able to see some type of growth from Andy. And I know this is spoiler alert. If you haven't seen the second preview, nobody died, nobody in the coma um, Andy and Gary are both fine. They gonna meet up at the bank. She got all her sisters with her, and Gary has um, Aaron with him. I'm assuming to be like the mediator, like maybe Karen's her mediator, Aaron is his mediator, so they can exchange, get this money, and hopefully he's out of her life. Now that would be too good to be true. I don't believe that's going to happen. What I would love to see is Tyler letting. Andy go to a, a therapist because her issues are not going to be solved just by giving Gary his money. This girl has problems, deep rooted, deep issues that I will, I ain't got to see her sit in the chair, but just for her to speak. Yeah. I'm going, y'all know I got a therapist. I'm going to therapy. It, that needs to happen because Andy just, she too far off. She too far off for a quick fix. It's not going to work. She need professional help. So, Danny and Preston, this scene, this scene was entirely too long. This scene was entirely too long, and I thought back. I'm like, this is why I don't like damn Danny. <laughs> Last week, she made me laugh. She cool. I love, and I do love her, so I don't want nobody to think that. I love all the sisters. Just some of them get on my nerves more than others. And so, <laughs> so Danny and came home. Danny and took a shower. You know, she trying to get it in with Preston. And so to make a long story short, with, and it's going to be short with this scene, basically he was just telling her the things he don't like. Like if we're getting to know each other, there are certain things you need to know I don't like. I don't like when you call me the white boy. I don't like when you call me rodeo. I don't like the handcuffs. Just certain things I do not like. And in the same breath, Danny cuffs him. After this man done told me, well, I won't call you the white boy from whatever like that she said. And I'm just like, Danny, I really believe that um, Preston really, really likes Danny. And I believe he cares for her. But I believe that Danny's immaturity is going to cause a huge, not just a huge, but many problems along the way in their relationship. Because I think we know she's the committed relief of the show. However, sometimes, and it's just the way that Tyler writes, sometimes... It, her comedic, her comedic uh, perspective is not needed. It's just not needed. But anyway, that was pretty much that scene. You know, she wanted to get it in. She took a shower. You know, Preston was concerned because, you know, the, the boy could have had hepatitis. You get hepatitis from eating. But he just, <laughs> Preston had me rolling because he was so serious. He was so serious. That thing was so funny. Um, but, yeah, that's how I feel about them. I, I am I'm intrigued of their relationship. And just to see what's going to happen as they continue on um, with each other. So I know that the parents going to be an issue because they're racist. And I'm interested to see how Danny is going to um, deal with that if and when she actually meets them. So we're going to transition to Maurice and Sabrina. That scene was long as hell, too. Um, it was funny, but it was long as hell. So I'm going to make that short. Long story short, Sabrina, I'm trying to figure out when the hell did Sabrina change clothes? Everybody else got home in the attire they wore to the restaurant. Sabrina comes over to Maurice's house. She got on a whole nother outfit. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what the hell? What what happened? Where did Sabrina go? How the hell is Sabrina this drunk? Because when she left the girls, she was not that drunk. She was barely tipsy, but that, Sabrina was gone. So, Basically, she's telling Maurice that she saw Calvin out with another girl. And he was like, you know, who, who else is tired of, of Sabrina and Calvin BS? And he held up his hands in one of his legs. It's like, seriously, I'm tired of them. If you don't want to be with this man, Sabrina, damn it, leave him alone. Move on. Let him move on. You move on. Everybody just move on. Because there is no reason to be to go through all of this to get drunk because you saw this man with another woman because you don't want to be with him. Those were your words. You're not ready. You have every right not to be ready. But don't get upset and in your feelings about him because your, your, um, how can I say this? You don't want to deal with yourself. 
Because I do believe she want to be with Calvin. I just believe that Sabrina is scared, and I get that, and I do understand that. But don't allow your fear, don't project that onto somebody else. Deal with your fear and your hurt and whatever as a grown-ass woman and let that man move on with his life. So, now I got to call Tyler out on this because this one just made me so mad. Now, how the hell does Maurice have the ability to see the cameras at the bank? He is a regular bank tell her you're not a team lead you're not a manager you're not a supervisor you're not you're not any you're not a regional nothing how the hell do you have access on your personal computer of the bank's cameras somebody please help me with that because I'm like you have actual footage of recording and live so you can still see the fact that Alonzo is still laid out on on the pavement that didn't make a bit of sense to me. I don't even know how that. I was like, now nah, this is extreme. If anybody would have access to that, I would say Sabrina would and um, her boss. But I'm like, why does Maurice have access to this? So that, I, um, crazy. So Sabrina was concerned because it didn't look like Alonzo was moving. It looked like he was, you know, <laughs> he was gone, you know, silent night for him. And um, so they end up going to the bank. And he's still laying there. He's not moving. They didn't even check to see if he was even breathing, like checking his vitals or, or checking for a pulse. So they don't know. So Sabrina asked Maurice to give her her phone so she can call the police, the ambulance. This dude leaves her there. I got, let me go back to this. I hate with a passion how many times Maurice has called Sabrina, excuse my language, a bitch. I hate that. It's like that's her name. He has said it so many times, and I really wish that Tyler would stop writing that. It, it's ridiculous. It's almost like it's insulting after after a while. Like that is not that. Stop calling her that. And so he called her that as he sped off and left her. Now I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna be very transparent. I laughed not because the scene was funny. I was so shocked that he left this woman out there with this body who we don't know if he's dead or alive. It took me, I was so like, whoa. It was such a wow moment for me. I just couldn't believe it. I just, we wouldn't have a friendship after that. It may have been comical. We wouldn't have a, you left me out here alone at night at a bank with this professional football player's body laid out on the pavement. Maurice, I would have no words for you. I would have no words for you. Okay, so let's get to Calvin so we can wrap this up. So Calvin is in bed with, I'm assuming she could. she's an old friend. Maybe they were more back in the day because they have had sex. Um, and he just couldn't get it up because he's thinking about Sabrina. She wasn't offended. She actually went on to try to give him some advice on what he needed to do. Now, let me tell you this. <laughs> My virtual friend was like, I know, I, I bet not ever find out that you have done something like that. Let me tell you something, friend, everybody else listening. I have never, if I'm in the bed with you, baby, trust and believe I'm not giving you advice on how to deal with another woman. I thought that was so far-fetched. He couldn't do nothing for you. He couldn't perform. And I'm about to sit here and give you advice on the woman that you are allowing to block what we came here to do? Oh, baby, I'm not giving you no advice. Bump you, bump her, I'm out. We have nothing to talk about, friend or not. And no, I'm not finna comfort you. No, I'm not finna spoon with you. I said, why the hell did Tyler write this scene? I don't know. But I'm going to tell you what, Um, I, I, I bet you every dollar I got that when Sabrina is in a position to have sex with Jacoby, because I know it's coming, she going to do what needs to be done. And you know what? I ain't going to blame her. I'm going to be rooting for her. <laughs> that's the hole that's deep, 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 deep down inside of me who who don't come out, you know, who don't come out. But that you know, I live vicariously through certain people, and that's one of them. So uh, <laughs> I have no sense. I am a true nut. I am a true nut. But um, that was the thing uh, with, with Calvin. So to close the episode out, Karen and Aaron are in bed, and his phone is vibrating. So Karen wakes him up and tells him, like, to answer his phone because whoever is reaching out to him, they've been blowing him up. So come to find out, Gary is in Aaron's, one of his men's group, I'm assuming, at the church. And so he's crying. He's telling Aaron he did something bad. You know I love Andy, the girl I've been telling you about. 
And he was like, I should have listened to you because obviously Gary told him you need to end things. You need to end your marriage before you begin something with this woman. He was like, I should have listened to you. I don't know why I didn't listen to you. So he's just in this panic. And um, Aaron says his name. He was like, Gary, where are you? You know, he's trying to find out what's going on. And then Aaron said, like, the name Andy still is not clicking in the, is not clicking to him that this is your girl Andy. And so when Karen was like, wait, Aaron, is that Gary, Gary Borders? And Aaron was like, yeah, wait a minute, this your Andy? And so she was like, yeah. So she calls Andy. I'm assuming the phone went to voicemail. So she left a message telling Andy to call her right back, you know, call her back now. And, you know, Gary was just like, man, how much can a man take? Just how much can one man take, man? And then we see him screeching off. And Aaron, his phone goes, it's beeping. Aaron and Karen look at each other. And she was like, what happened? What did he do to her? Like, let's go. So they get up and go. And that's the end of the episode. Now, like I said, spoiler alert, because I always tell y'all there are two previews that come out. Now, the preview that is on sister social media, it shows that Andy it's fine when Aaron and Karen arrive at her apartment. She's sitting up in bed. Aaron, Karen asks, like, did he hit you? It shows that they're going to have a meeting at the bank, um, I guess, to give her the money. You can hear Sabrina talking about how we vowed we wouldn't let these men do this to us again. I'm like, who are you talking about us, sis? It's Andy. And, I, and I'm like, I'm real, I'm real tight about this because I don't want Gary and Andy BS to affect Karen and Aaron because Andy is her best friend and I'm assuming that Aaron is going to be the person that may have some type of influence with Gary don't let they toxic mess flow into y'all y'all doing great keep up the good work let them sort out their own mess don't let it affect y'all but everybody fine no one has died no one is in a coma we good sisters good thought it was a great episode. it was a good episode looking forward to next week episode 12 it's entitled thinking of you we gonna see what happens we, we, we just going to see what happens. So that's the end of Sisters. I think I got everything. I hope I did. No, I didn't. So <laughs> let me, I'm trying, I didn't know I was going to talk this long for Sisters. So honestly, Gary comes back to Andy's house. This helper had the nerve to say, who is it? You know who it is. And low key, I think her twisted mind wanted Gary to come back because there's just no way you would be that comfortable knowing this man has access to your house. So she comes out as Gary. She's like, what are you doing here? He says, I could come here anytime I want. Gary's drunk. Gary is basically telling her he want, he about to go lay down in the room. No, Gary, you can't do that. No, I think you need to go home. Tell me you love me. I love you. I said, oh, my God, Andy. I just don't understand. Like, she had her hand on his hand, being so compassionate. I'm like, this woman is really out of her mind it makes me feel like Andy has never had genuine love before other than from her friends and it's like I, I that's why I said I just hope she gets the help that she needs the character because baby girl is gone to even be up there with Gary like that uh, even allowing him to hug her he's squeezing her so I'm, I'm assuming that that Gary think he's harmed Andy in some way but Andy is perfectly fine She's sitting up in bed, so y'all forgot about that scene. So this actually ends <laughs> the sisters' review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, thank you for sending me your stuff. So what I'm going to try to do, I don't know exactly when the show is coming back, but I believe it's coming back in January. So I'm going to try to fill in those weeks with um, videos from the questions that you guys have sent me. They've been some very, very good questions, some very good uh, synopsis in, on what you guys are going to uh, what you guys think is going to happen, and I'll do my best to make a video uh, of those. So we're about to transition into the House of Pain review. Now, um, House of Pain, what can I say about it? Um, Lisa, the, the premise of the entire show was Lisa being, you know, she's pregnant. Um, Malik and CJ are watching a big game. She comes down because she wants to watch. It's some reality show. She want to see who win or who get the roles or something like that. So she takes over the TV in the front. And so the whole time after that, Malik just has an attitude. He wants to tell her that ain't how you do when you're living in someone's house. You don't do that. He's mad. I'm like, this ain't your house either. You living here and it happened to bring your pregnant girlfriend who I'm questioning if the heifer were really pregnant or not, you ain't showing. CJ made that point. Like, she's not even showing. And she's not. 
So it's like he's trying to school Malik as to how he should handle a pregnant woman, how delicate he should be because she's dealing with hormones. She's dealing with all of these things. And you just have to be mindful how you approach her. And I understood that. But at the end of the day, CJ, this is your house. And help me, I'm trying to figure out, you got that big old house. You got all these darn kids. And you have one television? One. Okay. So, (laughs) and then he made some statement about how he didn't, they wanted to monitor their kids' TV usage. I totally understand, and I get that. And, you know, we want them to go to college. We want them to be smart. Don't associate watching TV with someone being dumb. I... (laughs) I said, Lord, what's going on? What's going on? Then we see, I totally missed this part. <laughs> I saw Miranda. I didn't see um, Christian. And I'm like, why the hell that baby looks, why he's so small? That baby should not be that young. But you know what? It is what it is. I ain't going to harp on that. I'm just giving y'all my review. Um, so, uh, yeah, she came over. Janine supposedly was upstairs with the twins. We probably going to never see Janine no more. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I know that her and China are booked and busy. I know China going through her own transition right now with the things she wants to do in Hollywood and the things that she don't, which I am totally an advocate for her for doing that. And I totally love it. Love seeing it. Um, I don't know when we're going to see Demetria McKinney again. Um, the episode, it was just like, I can't even say like this was so, it, it just wasn't interesting. I think that's the better word. It just wasn't an interesting episode because at the end, Lisa got so mad at Malik, she packed the bag and she was like, she was leaving. And I'm like, go. Y'all don't even seem like y'all are in a relationship. Y'all just seem like y'all stuck together because she's about, she's having his baby if she's having his baby. I'm not really, you know, sold on that yet. But it was just like, that was the whole premise of it. You know, Malik and CJ went to the kitchen to watch the game on his phone and they couldn't really see anything. Malik hasn't even purchased his own phone. He's using the old phone that his parents got him. So it's like, come on, step up, baby boy. Tyler, it's time for Malik to step up and act like a man on this show. I'm tired of his sh- his childish shenanigans. He, I can't even imagine him being a father with the way that he thinks. But, you know, it is what it is. It, it just wasn't an interesting show. It, it just felt like another filler show until next, I don't know. I really don't know you guys. I don't this was the first time ever I happened to be watching Assisted Living on accident because I do not watch the show. And I actually enjoyed Assisted Living more than I enjoyed House of Pain. Never thought I'd say that. And House of Pain has had some pretty bad episodes, but I always put them above Assisted Living. And I think the past two I saw like the last ten minutes of last week's episode. And this episode is but it's getting interesting. However, I still don't think I could watch a whole 30 minutes of it. But last night's episode of Assisted Living was very good. You know, coming to find out, is this, I don't don't remember the guy's name, but is this guy being abused, the one who drives the bus? His father is the the sheriff. What is he doing? It looks like he's abusing this kid, starving this kid out. Like, it has become, I'm interested in that storyline. But House of Pain, it just wasn't, it just wasn't an entertaining um, episode, so... Y'all tell me y'all thoughts about that. Because I'm like, man, this show so horrible. It's just like I just found no interest in it. You know, really I didn't. Um, yeah, so that's really how that was with, with House of Pain. It's just same old, same old um, as before. Uh, so, yeah, that's how I feel about it. But if you do watch Assisted Living, um, the storyline with the young man that the daughter liked at one point, um, how do y'all feel about that? Like, it, it touched me. Like, it touched my heart especially the last 10 minutes I saw of last week to find out really what's going on with this young man. So I got to give Tyler big ups because I can't say that I've gotten emotional um, with watching his 30 minute shows in a, in a long time and assisted living really like touched me. So, yeah, so that's all I got for, for that. I hope you guys enjoyed these reviews. Let me know your thoughts, your opinions um, about what you're seeing. I really appreciate you guys more than, you know, I will holler at y'all later. Love y'all be safe out there until next time. One.